Hey everyone, I was asked to make a video about what kind of gear I use to catch a ling cod. First, I want to disclose that I am a newbie to ling cod. This is only the second ling cod I've caught, but it was the second in two days, so it maybe means something. Um, so what I've got here is a very stout rod. Believe it or not, this rod cost $35 at Walmart, okay? It's called an ugly stick, a uh, big water. Sorry, it's upside down. I can see if I can flip that over for you. It's called an ugly stick, big water. And you want it, this is a good stick because it's less than seven feet long and um, it is very stout, it can handle a lot of weight and it's a one piece. Uh, you can use a salmon rod, but it's gonna kinda, one, it's gonna abuse your salmon rod at that two piece connection. Number two, your salmon rod bends maybe a little bit too much. And number three, it's so long that when you're hanging a bunch of weight off the end, it's gonna make it very tiring at the end of the day. I've already had one of my guests complain that his shoulder was out. Um, so the, we start with the rod, then we have um, a, a reel. Okay, it should be a bait casting type reel like this. This one is a cold water Akuma. I think it runs about $120. Um, the nice thing about this is that to release, you just press the button there and then you can start reeling up because you're gonna be doing this about a thousand times to catch a link cod. All right, so we've got 40 pound braid. Then it's a simple banana weight. This is a four ounce. If you get into heavier current, you need more weight, um, up to eight ounces. I got fours and sixes and eights, and today I had to use some eights for a while. Um, so the name of the game is to try to avoid spending a ton of money when you lose gear, because you are gonna lose gear. So this is a snap, this is a, a barrel swivel. You can buy these in bulk for maybe like 30 cents or something like that. This is a dual lock, lock snap. You can buy these in a package of 25. Again, for, it probably runs about 35 cents. This banana weight probably runs uh, three bucks, depending on the, the weight. And they come with these bead swivels on here. Again, another dual lock at the end. All right, now the point is that you wanna try to keep this. You don't wanna lose this. Um, then attached to that is a, I did these, uh, I made a hand, well, first let me show you um, an actual pre-made. Okay, so here's a, here's a pre-made leader. This is a Mustad leader, and it's got, um, these are four-aught hooks with 30-pound mono, or here's another brand, and this is a two-aught, three-aught, that's actually not the right ones for Lincod. I've got another one here. This is a, here's a, uh, no, it's another two-aught, three-aught. There's another one here, sorry. Here it is. Here's a mooching rig. This is a, it doesn't say, but I think, oh, wait, there's, Four, it's a four aught, five aught. Okay, one hooks four, one hook hooks five. It's made of 30 pound mono. So this is, this is like a buck. Okay, so that's the easiest way to get into this. But really, really key is don't make a long leader. Okay, this thing can't be more than 30 inches. Otherwise what happens is that this starts to wrap around the weight and it's, it's a total mess. So the shorter, the better, although obviously you don't want it too short. Okay, so then at the end of these hooks, you have a couple options. One is using herring. Green label herring will work. This is what I caught my first link caught on. Problem with green label herring, this is what they use over in Westport. And they catch both rockfish and ling cod. And it's perfect because the rockfish love these things. It fits into their small mouths. But that's a problem in Puget Sound because we cannot keep rockfish. So we caught a ton of rockfish the other day and then we had to release them all. And when you release them, uh, you need to use a descender, which is one of these things that kind of looks like an upside down hook. This one's actually got a pin on it. What you do is you attach your line to here. You actually, you put this through the jaw of the fish and it, these are hard jaws. So you poke it through the jaw, okay? And then you hang a weight off of the bottom of this. I didn't show you that. There's a little snap here. You hang a weight off of this, okay? You put it through his jaw and then you drop them into the water. And, and uh, you don't want to send a ling cod, but I'm just sh saying on a fish in general. And then, uh, sorry, the weight, the weight actually goes on the other side. The weight goes here, sorry. The weight goes here. You attach the weight here. So this goes through his lips. And then this pulls him down while your rod is attached to this point here. And then when, when he's at the right, the right depth, you just pull up and then it'll release. 
Okay, so that's why the herring works, but you're gonna go through a lot of um, a lot of rockfish, which is fun at first, but not later. Okay, so the other option is to get yourself a sand dab. These are a favorite meal of the lingcod, and you can catch them fairly easily using a Berkeley Power Power Bait uh, sandworms motor oil, and um, I've got. I have these little rigs with two, two hooks on them. I'll, I'll take this one out here. These little pool noodles are great for storing things. So this has got two hooks. You want to get thin, long hooks if possible. These ones are actually very difficult to find now. But uh, yeah, so you, you have two, two of those worms on this rig. Now here's a key, is that you want to have a slider on the line. This is this is a slider right here. So you attach this to the line and then you put this this weight on the bottom of it. Okay? And that lets the the fish take take the bait without feeling the weight of it. All right. So, we talked about baits. How do you rig this up? So, I'm going to take this sling cud. I sorry, this um sand dab. I'm going to stick it through the head and then I'm going to take the other hook and I'm going to turn it uh, you want the hook to be facing like this but in order to get it facing like that you actually have to start it facing this direction you're going to stab it in there which is easier said than done and have it poke out like that okay that's now imagine what this thing is rigging rigging wriggling around how hard is that so if you want if you if it's too hard you can just leave the the trailing hook dangling okay gotta have a towel this stuff is really nasty uh, another option is you can actually use a treble hook so it is legal i know you're gonna argue with me but i have not only heard this from an attorney i actually asked a wdfw officer a treble hook is legal only when fishing for lingcod not for salmon okay and you have to pinch all the barbs the rules are for salmon is a single point barbless hook. Okay, that's only for salmon. Otherwise, it's two hooks. But a hook can have one point or it can have three points. Either is fine. So you can have a treble hook. And so the treble hook, you can embed. I just embed it this way and then you've got two points sticking up. Um, it's just a safety measure. Um, okay. What is the, so I've talked about the gear. So you're going to have this nice little sand dab attached to this banana weight. And what is the action? Well, you're, you're going to drop it to the bottom. You'll feel it at the bottom, crank up immediately, two or three cranks, and then just slowly jig it up and down. Now, if you jig up like this and you have, have low current, then the bait is going to wrap around the main line. It's going to be a mess. Okay, so I recommended that unless you have strong current, you just gently bring it up and down. But every four or five jigs, you want to drop it, contact the bottom, and then again, reel up two or three cranks, and then do repeat the process again. And you always want to be over structure. So you see little, you know, you're looking at the sonar, you want to see some bumps there. Uh, and you want, you need rocky areas. You need rocky areas. Okay, and so if you're catching rockfish, that's a good sign you're in the right area, but you're probably using bait that's too small, these little herring. And so you're going to need to use, oh, sand dabs. I wanted to mention, you can buy plastic sand dabs. Yeah, these are plastic sand dabs. You can get these for about five bucks. Okay, and how do you, how do you rig these? Well, you can do the exact same thing as, you, as I showed you before. But the other thing you can do is you can use these jig heads. This jig head is right there, 259. You put the jig head through this guy so that it, the hook is sticking up like that. Um, but the problem is these cost $2.59. These cost about five bucks. So you're losing $8 every time you get stuck in a rock versus with this thing with 25. So this is a 25 pound test. 25 pound test will break before any of this, uh, the other stuff does. So the idea is that you don't want to be losing a lot of lead on the bottom of the ocean, okay? <laughs> Makes sense. But the first time I went link cod fishing, we literally lost 50 bucks worth of lead. So it's an expensive way to fish. Um, I think that's about 
all I wanted to, to tell you. Oh, when a lingcod bites, don't immediately try to set the hook, okay? He may come back around a second time, but basically, you know, wait until you can actually feel something on and then just slowly and steadily reel up, okay? Don't ever stop, don't ever stop. Keep on going because they can throw the hook. That's why you have two hooks and ideally a treble so that if they throw one hook, you still got another's hook. Um, and then when you get them up to the surface, that's when they're really gonna thrash and they're gonna, you're gonna lose them. So get that net in the water as soon as possible. And also, if you can, get his head out of the water. Make sure you always have tension. You want, always wanna have tension like this. If this is the fish, you always wanna have tension on that line. As soon as you let the line go slack, this, this hook, because it's barbless, it can just slip right out. All right, so good luck, guys. Hope you, hope you catch, some, catch some lingcod. Hey, I almost forgot. I want to also tell you there's a whole different style of, of fishing, and that is using jigs or swim baits. Um, and what you do is you, and these Berkeley gulps, they work great, and uh, we did catch lingcod on these. And all you do is you take one of these grubs and you, you skewer it through. I'll, I'll go ahead and show you. Well, here's here's a here's one that's not so smelly. You take you take the the grub, you take the jig head, and you just put it on here. Now this these jig head these grubs cost uh, it's like a for a package of four you're paying about eight dollars, so it's about two bucks a head. And then these you know these run two or three bucks, so you know you're, you're losing six or seven bucks a shot. You can buy these particular ones for eighty nine cent at Outdoor Emporium. Um, by the way, I recommend Outdoor Emporium. It's a great place, and and try to speak to Kevin in the kayak department if he's not too busy. He's a buddy of mine. I've taken him out fishing many times. He he knows this stuff. He knows how to catch lingcod and salmon. He's he's really good. Um, but anyways, I don't I don't recommend that just because you're losing so much gear. And to be honest, the, the lingcod really would prefer um, a big bait like this because like one area I passed over, you know, for spent an hour passing over it with with jigs like these, and we we just got rockfish and stuff. Put on a uh, a herring. And very quickly after, we caught our legal lingcod. Now, it didn't, didn't happen again. We couldn't make it happen again, but still. Um, so, yeah. Good luck.